and large enough to change plans? Um, I'm not sure at this point that would be something that would come through uh, Ventura County Fire. Um, sure. But we do have a website that people can check, vcemergency.com, for updated information regarding the fire evacuations and road closures. All right, Senior Deputy Tim Lohman with the Ventura County Sheriff's Department, we appreciate you speaking with us. And again, our hearts go out to all of your uh, first responders and, and, the, and all the entire department dealing with so much right now. Thank you for speaking with us and giving us an update. We also want to bring back in Danielle Gersh. She is monitoring the situation as well, Danielle. Yeah, so winds are really strong through this area. Uh, gusting at 45 right now, relative humidity at 10% up in Boney Mountain. I do have a little map that I just made, kind of that'll show you where this started. Behind Sherwood, I mentioned, we've been mentioning Carlisle Canyon a uh, lot, and that's kind of where this began. Keep in mind, this is behind the lake, Sherwood area. And if I zoom out just a bit, you can see Potrero Road kind of connects the Newberry Park side to the Westlake Village side. Candace is right by Potrero Road and Wendy. There are a lot of popular hiking trails back there. From what it looks like, it does kind of look like uh, this is moving more toward the Channel Islands area. Uh, I have some friends who are in the area who have been watching it too. And this is really uh, an area kind of behind Hidden Valley where Cara is. There are horse farms that line Potrero Road. Uh, they do a lot of filming out there. There are a lot of equestrian facilities. Now this is kind of than 50 acres large. You've been interviewing residents who are evacuating all over again. How's it looking right now? Yeah, so many of them got the text that they could come back, the alert on their phones, and then now are turning right back around. Let's give you a look up first at the hillside behind us. We are on the Hidden Valley side, and that's the smoke rising from this flare-up, which has been underway for more than an hour now, a very serious flare-up. We've seen DC-10s dropping, uh, lots of helicopters up there, dropping both retardant and water on this and trying to get the upper hand. Joining us live here now is Alex Goodwin. He is a Hidden Valley resident. You also have a business nearby a place where you work uh, and you said you just you were in Solvang and you just got the got the alert this morning that you could come back yes exactly and we, we came back in thought everything was done and went to work this morning and me and all my colleagues over at Thermomix were standing looking out the window and we saw the plume of smoke and I came to get more masks for the office and I saw this and pulled over to see if we should evacuate and you also live in this community. Yes, yes, it's it's terrible. We, we evacuated, thought the danger was done, and then, of course, came back thinking it was safe. We got the alert saying the evacuation was over, and it's it's terrifying. Um, talk to us a little bit about your office. You said you have a couple of there who are concerned about the smoke, that there are some, some concerns there were even before this flare -up. Yes, we have a couple different pregnant women in the office, and uh, actually I was going out to get more masks. Uh, they have some, but uh, it, it is it's very concerning. In fact, the last thing uh, one of my colleague said to me who says she's she's got four sets of lungs she needs to protect and uh, she's yeah deeply concerned and what about your family have you been in touch with them since this has all started oh yes yeah it's, it's tough to actually respond to everybody who's texting in to make sure that we're okay because I see it on the news and and it, it looks as bad as it does on TV it's 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 unbelievable what did it look like out here initially when the hill fire roared through Oh boy, well, it, uh, the, the smoke is kind of indescribable. And when you actually see flames, you're driving around and there's flames on all sides. There's flames literally surrounding us, surrounding the house, surrounding the car. It's, it's, it's like Armageddon, it's pretty indescribable. And I'm gonna let Al, if you wanna turn around and kind of walk and show the closure here in the street while we continue to talk with you because uh, this area closed off, we've got police here. Is, is this created a problem for you getting back to your work? I mean, what, what's going on with all of your colleagues you were concerned about? Yeah, that's a good question, just because they've been closing roads pretty quickly. In fact, I've been trying to find ways to get back around and it's everything has been closed down, but the, the police and fire have been doing a great job, just making sure everybody's safe. I know I've heard from many people in your community, just thanks being given out to these firefighters who oh, yeah. already had to be exhausted and now this. No, it's, it's true. I mean, they, they've done an amazing job. I saw three of them come in for lunch uh, and I bought them lunch. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, you know, we can't be more grateful to the job that they're doing. It's unbelievable. So many of them were out here. We were covering uh, in the Thousand Oaks area some of the mop up in one of these communities trying to get the power back on uh, and they were out there doing that when suddenly uh, this happened, everyone just turned around and started racing here. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. As I say, the response that they're doing, um, and us just trying to stay out of their way, one of the things that we were told is when they have the mandatory evacuation is to evacuate, to clear the space so that they can operate and do the job they need to do.
So at this point, uh, where are you now? You've been watching your phone. Y yes, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to see if everyone back at the office should leave or not. And uh, as I say, we have a couple of different pregnant women that we're trying to obviously keep safe. Uh, we're looking at the air particulate uh, count just to see if it's safe to breathe the air. That's one of our other big concerns. All right, thanks so much for yes, joining us you. here live. Uh, and we're giving you another look at that hillside up above. We have uh, lots of folks coming out here at this point. I know you've got an LAFD hat on. Are you? Do you live here in the neighborhood? Or are you uh, with the fire department? I'm retired. You're retired. Right. What do you think about what's going on behind us here? I'm optimistic. Right now they're trying to stop it at uh, Boney Mountain. Okay. And you can see that DC-10 that just went through the jet. I don't know what he carries, but uh, the sky cranes carry about 2,500 gallons. And he's dropping retardant, which is FOS check. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm optimistic. Yeah. His job is not to put out the fire. His job is to create a fuel break. And talk to us about this, because it does look like there's a lot of very green, lush fuel up there. Well, this is your typical California chaparral, and what I'm optimistic about is most of the uh, north-facing slope on Sycamore Canyon was burned about five years ago. So that creates a natural uh, fuel break, which uh, greatly diminishes the, the amount of, um, of fuel on the ground that can burn and intensify the fire. And you can see there he is right there. That's a DC-10. And when, what he does is when he, when he drops his wheels, that tells everybody he's on his final approach. I'm sorry, did you, you didn't, he That's did. DC-10. Yeah, and did he, did he already, he did no, not drop yet. We're about so. to see him drop. So. See, he's got his lead plane. That's his lead plane. No, that's not a lead plane. That's a uh, C-47 or so. Or, uh, We've been watching a number of drops. I saw the other side of this uh, hill was just painted with red retardant. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's incredible the technology they've come up with in the last 10 years, you know, the capacity. And do you live mm. nearby here as well? Oh yeah, I live uh, three tenths of a mile from here. How did you first realize that there was a flare up again? Well, I, uh, my, my daughter called me up and she says, look out your back window. So I said, uh, okay. And at that point, uh, I got my gear on and I, I've got some fusies in the back of my car and we're, we're going to backfire our property. Uh, there's, a, there's a property um, on Comstock that's owned by a fireman and I'm on Antelope and we're not going to let this place burn down. If we have to, we'll go up in our attics with, uh, and knock down the sparks as they come through the vents and stuff. Oh, no. uh, so frightening for everyone. seen it worse though. Uh, about 15 years ago, it came right down to the brush at, in the open space behind our houses. So what I'm expecting is this fire will probably burn in the ocean like they all do, and then the winds will change and the winds will come onshore, and I would not expect that within a week this whole drainage will be burned out. And sir, you were with the L.A. Fire Department? Yeah, I was for uh, 30 years and two weeks, and loved every minute of it. All right, well, and they're doing a great job for us today out there. Those firefighters have got to be exhausted. And there's something else to look at, too. If you notice, they've cut a fuel break in here. If you, you, you see the difference in the, uh, in the vegetation about 300 yards in, how much taller it is? Yes. Well, to their credit, they cut this about two weeks ago in anticipation of a fire, and that'll help us a lot. Because oh, wow. that DC-10, he can go right through here, and he can, he can drop his retardant and just knock down the fire before it gets into the housing track. All right, and Al, if you can... Al, if you can pan down, we can show them this fuel break that we're talking about right here. It is a, and this was just two weeks ago, he's yeah, telling us. Two weeks ago with a bush hog and uh, cut it all down. So a fresh break, yeah, in light of the fire burning, a very smart move uh, with the neighborhood just behind us. Going in for a drop right now. He's probably hitting uh, the top of Boney Mountain. Peter, Suzanne. Carl, we are so impressed with this gentleman you are speaking with right now and, and the fact that he's so knowledgeable and a former firefighter himself. We've been all over this fire. And the fact that they created that fuel we went, we went break just two weeks ago. We the timing down, couldn't be better. Springs, the whole area. We got lucky because we have... It's amazing. I, I wanted to make sure, actually, I was still connected to you. We've been having such cell service uh, issues in this area that I wanted to make sure you were still hearing me and we were still broadcasting. Let me bring him back in. Um, they're impressed with the fact that this was done. Have the firefighters been doing other work in this area as well? The firefighters didn't do this. We think the, the state park system did, which, state was, park. which was a smart move. You know, they're, they were mm -hmm. anticipating a possible fire. And I've lived here for 30 years, and this is the first time they cut a fuel break like this, wow. which and is super smart. 30 years he lived because, here, that's the like first I mentioned time. before, wow. this is going to go to the ocean, and then it's going to turn around and come right back at us. But most of this area was burned like uh, five to ten years ago, so um, I'm optimistic that they can keep it out of the houses in this area. Yeah, if we flip around, Al, if you can show them just how close we are to houses, this is a big community here. It's a huge community. There's about 12,000 people who live here between here and the next mountain range. This is this is what they call Newberry Park. Okay, we've been saying Hidden Valley. Hidden Valley is, this is Patrol Road. Okay. And if you go through, uh, up this road for two miles, then you come to Hidden Valley. 
And that's the large acre parcels up there. Okay. Uh, so right here, this is Newberry Park. Yeah, this is technically that's the same zip code as us, but uh, um, residence-wise, this is considered to be Newberry Park, and that's considered to be Hidden Valley. And both communities obviously impacted by this right now. What else can you tell us about how far away you think this fire is? Because now at this point, I don't see as much of the smoke overhead. Right. Um, this fire is probably on the south side of uh, what we call Blue Canyon. And what happens is you, uh, you have a Corral Canyon, which comes up and, and makes a, a, a connection with uh, the upper part of Sycamore. So you have, you have Sycamore that drains down to the ocean about eight miles. And then on the other side of Sycamore, you have what's called Blue Canyon. And this fire appears to be in what's called Blue Canyon right now. And Fred Noweska and I had an opportunity to drive the road two days ago. We drove from here all the way down to the beach um, just doing a, a, a reconnaissance. And we got through a couple of you know checkpoints and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm optimistic. Uh, and can you talk to us a little bit about the winds that we are experiencing right now? What impact is this having on the fire? Well. What happens is, and, and I saw this on the 9th, is that your fire will get at the bottom of these, what we call shoots, and then it preheats the brush. And technically what happens is, brush gets so hot it puts off a gas and the gas lights. And that's what you're concerned about. You, you certainly don't want to be, uh, you, you certainly don't want to have a spot fire down below you that's preheating the slope between you and the fire because that will suddenly ignite and take out the whole slope in like five minutes. All right. Thank you so much, sir, you're for welcome. speaking with us. Let me get your name again. It's Mike Dunn. Mike Dunn the uh, with Fred the LAFD Fred. retired. Yeah, retired. And the other guy was Fred Noweska. <laughs> okay, appreciate it. All right, back to you, Peter, well, Suzanne. Our best to Mike Dunn. Let me tell you, what a compelling. Uh, interview you just got there, Cara, and he was so full of knowledge. 12,000 people, he just said, live in that community of Newberry Park right next to where that fire is. And it was interesting to hear, he also said 2,500 gallons of FOSS check inside the DC-10 that drops. You can see right there, all of that FOSS check on the fire fuel break. So incredible uh, information that he had. And he talked about the state parks doing fire breaks just a couple weeks ago. So we saw that open field where it looks like they cut down a bunch of brush in preparation of a really devastating fire season. And look where we're at. All right, we want to bring in our uh, Candace Crone. She is live in Newberry Park right now. Candace, what can you tell us? Yeah, Peter, when we drove up, we could see this fire, the plume of smoke for miles around. It's attracted a lot of people like Jose Ariaga. He lives in Newberry Park, not far from where the fire is burning. Uh, Jose, tell me how you found out about this fire and what went through your mind. So my wife and I, we went out for breakfast this morning and everything was calm. Everything was nice. Uh, we we're kind of like celebrating after so many days of fires that things were getting back to normal. And then all of a sudden when we came out of uh, Paneras, and we see this huge, uh, you know, fire here. So we were driving back home. Both of our kids are at home because they don't have school this week. Uh, the classes were suspended. And so we just stopped by just for a few minutes just to see what's going on. And it's just um, very impressive to see all this, this smoke. And it's like you said, it's been a trying last several few days and you guys were out to celebrate and now having to deal with this. It just seems like we just can't get a break. Yeah, it is just uh, terrible for our community after what happened uh, on Wednesday night um, and all these uh, last couple of days. It's like we're not getting a break, but I think uh, we're seeing the best of our community because we can see like everybody's getting together. Uh, everybody's been helping out in one way or another and uh, all the churches getting together, all the communities, uh, everybody's just getting closer. So I think uh, it is in times like this that uh, the communities get, really get, get tested. And, and we are so glad to see that our community has shown its best, uh, best and, and everybody's just doing their best. Mm -hmm. And we are just south of the 101 off of Pachero Road. And as we mentioned, this is near a Sycamore Canyon where there's a lot of hiking trails. You said you've been biking. Uh, it's kind of heartbreaking to see this happen in an area where so many people, so many families spend a lot of their outdoor time, would you say? Yeah, every day you come by here is uh, so many people hiking, biking, especially the weekends. Uh, such a beautiful place um, to come with your family, with your friends. And it's uh, heartbreaking to see uh, what is taking place, but uh, we have very uh, a lot of hope that uh, this side will not get affected. And as we are seeing right now, the the wind is uh, flowing and blowing in the 
I would get, say the, the right direction, um, and hopefully we are safe uh, you know, after today. And so far, you guys are safe. You are not under any evacuation orders. You guys are a couple miles away from the fire. Yeah, thank God we live closer to the freeway and uh, off Wendy and Old Conejo Road. So at this point, uh, everybody is safe. And you've spent a lot of time out here. For people who haven't been, what is it like? What is the terrain like? From what we can see, there are some areas of green, but there's a lot of dry brush out there too. What is it like? Uh, well, I mean, uh, conditions have changed over the years. And as we all know, the drought here for several years, we haven't gotten a lot of rain. So we see a lot of uh, dry and brushes all over the place. But uh, fortunate enough, for the last five, six years, we were not affected. But it just happened that this time is so terrible. And I think we're all suffering, you know, the results of these fires. And are you guys prepared if, you know, we do get a, a drastic change in the winds? Are you, have you thought about your plan in case you do need to evacuate? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So for the last couple of days, uh, our kids, I have my two kids are in high school. So we've been talking about it for every day. So we already know uh, what we need to do and where do we need to go and what we have in place. So I, I own a truck, so I already have everything uh, at home. So it will just take us a couple of minutes to put the most essential things in the truck and then go. All right, Jose, G glad you guys have a plan just in case uh, it does happen. Thank you for speaking with us, and thank, best thank of luck you. to you guys. Uh, again, but that's what we're hearing, just people coming out to take it all in, to look at uh, all of the smoke. Uh, as Jose mentioned, uh, he thought that, you know, we were on a break, that things were starting to calm down, and then we see uh, this uh, fire just break out. So uh, at this point, it's attracting a lot of people. We have seen um, several of these aircraft, spotter aircraft, as well as choppers, uh, surveying the area. We haven't seen any water drops from our side. I'm not sure if where Cara is. They've seen water drops over there. But uh, the smoke, for at least for the last uh, 10, 20 minutes, has been more white, uh, if anything. I know when we pulled up, uh, as this fire was burning about an hour ago, it started around 9.15, we saw a lot of black smoke. Well, Peter and Suzanne, that has kind of shifted a little bit. We're seeing more white smoke, uh, which is a good sign. And it does appear that the wind is uh, blowing not as, as strong and they're not as erratic winds as we've seen. So hopefully that is helping firefighters uh, battle this blaze, Peter and Suzanne. Candace, as you've been speaking about doing drops, we saw a beautiful drop on creating a break on one side of the fire. And it does, it, it touches you to hear from people who evacuated. They were just at Panera Bread last night celebrating yeah. that they could go back home. It's really hard to not be able to go back home after all these days if you do have a home to return to. Right. But within a half hour of this fire being announced, at least 50 acres burned over rocky, steep terrain, lots of vegetation to burn through. And then, of course, the windy conditions not helping. But those air attacks are making quite a difference. And the fire de departments told us that air resources are able to be moved quickly. They say other sections of the fire that they're battling are fine. They are staffed completely. They've, they've been able to relieve crews that have been working since last week. So they do feel they have a good handle on this fire right now, this new offshoot of the Woolsey fire, which this morning had burned over 90,000 acres, 35% containment. And they had just announced that the expected containment of the fire moved from Thursday to Sunday and we have another hiccup today. We had one yesterday though today's seems much worse. And you mentioned Suzanne it does look like those airdrops really are making a difference. We aren't seeing as many flames as we saw mm -hmm. about a half hour ago. Yeah. A lot more white so smoke which is a good sign. Now the Woolsey fire we also know has burned at least 435 structures and it's worth repeating that mandatory evacuations are in effect for Malibu Hidden Hills, Calabasas, Oak Park, and parts of Thousand Oaks and Westlake Village. However, evacuations have been lifted for other parts of Westlake Village, West Hills and Agora Hills, but certainly with this situation, this flare up right now, that's still tenuous because as we heard from some of the officials we spoke with by phone, they may change that to keep people uh, protected now that there is more risk. We want to bring in back Danielle Gersh. Danielle, it looks like things are improving. It does. You know, I think this fire is actually pushing south and west more away from the Lake Sherwood and the Carlisle Canyon area uh, where this flare up initially began. I do want to warn you, though, we still have really rough conditions out there. Boney Mountain, uh, that site's still reporting wind gusts out of the northeast at 45 miles per hour. Winds are sustained at 31 and 10 percent relative humidity. So uh, this map that you're looking at right now, this is kind of where that fire began behind the Lake Sherwood area and then kind of stayed behind Hidden Valley and where Cara and Candace are right now. They're actually in the Newberry Park area. So Petrero Road can
connects this section of Westlake Village to Newberry Park. Newberry Park close to where both of them are. There are a lot of hiking trails that that gentleman was talking about and this fire does look to be moving kind of behind those into the hills. Now it's moving away from the Lake Sherwood area right now and away from the Hidden Valley area. So I know a lot of people watching from there uh, right now concerned and just know it does right now look like it's moving away from you guys. And there are multiple areas that are evacuating right now. Carlisle Canyon, Lake Sherwood, and the Boney Mountain area. But everybody from every fire um, crew that we talked to has said, if it does feel like the fire is threatening your area, it's better to get out early. Get out now. Yes, but, and take what you need. Your medications is the number one thing that crews on the ground from our station have witnessed. People regret not taking just the basic essentials like medications, things you need for your health. And if there's one thing we have heard, as you mentioned, Suzanne, from residents who we've interviewed over and over and over again, it's that they wish they would have gotten out earlier. It's mm -hmm. never too early to evacuate. We want to bring in CBS 2's Greg Mills. He is live for us as well. Greg, what can you see from your vantage point? Really, actually, Peter, things look great from where we are. We're in Calabasas. I am on uh, Lone Springs Drive. That is the street right here and Sage Court right over here. We have beautiful blue sky. We're not terribly far away from Sherwood, but uh, anyhow, we have had blue skies right here. And these people are in the part of Calabasas where they've been allowed to come back. And so they're very happy to be back here, but they are, I'll tell you what, you've never seen so many cars and driveways as we're seeing right here. People are here and they aren't going to work today. They know that things are, are still a little bit tenuous. And so they're sticking around seeing a lot of adults that are here happy to be home. We've talked to a few of them, but take a look at the neighborhood. It looks like it's uh, back to normal, although I can tell you it is not. We talked to some people. One woman said that, uh, yeah, she left at two o'clock in the morning on uh, Friday morning and was scared to death. And she was also very scared that she was going to lose her house. And for two days, didn't, in fact, it was a house right there you're looking at. She didn't know if uh, her house was still standing until somebody was able to find it and say, yes, your house is okay. So she knew about that, but she just got back. And now she is housing a friend, another Calabasas resident. Uh, this woman, this poor woman, uh, her name is Rita. She and her family first were evacuated uh, last Thursday, and they went to Westlake Village. Then they were evacuated there about four hours later, so she then went to Moore Park. And then she came here, and now she's back with a friend here in another part of Calabasas where the evacuation orders were lifted. For her, Rita, evacuation orders are still in place, and she lives about two miles from here, also in Calabasas. Now, the deal here, this entire area, this neighborhood right here, we're just off Las, Ver Los, Las Virginis, which may be about uh, 200, 300 yards that way, next to uh, Malibu State Park. Now, everything is burned all the way around this neighborhood. That's the danger they were in. Firefighters were successful, as you can see, in keeping these homes safe, so they're thrilled about that. But this area was definitely threatened. They understood why they were evacuated, uh, what, four or five days ago. But uh, some people have been nomads going from house to house to house to house, which has been difficult on the families. And in fact, uh, people we talk to that have kids that are in school say, you know what, our kids want to go back to school. But right now in this area, schools are closed down until after Thanksgiving. Sounds like a, a great reprieve if you ask me back when I was in school, but these kids are kind of bored and want to go back to school and see their friends. They've been through so much. We had so much happen, as you know, starting Wednesday and then Thursday of last week. And it continues, as we've been seeing on that video uh, uh, with the fire that uh, sparked uh, just a little while ago. But right here, right now, they feel pretty much safe here in this part of Calabasas. But again, other parts of Calabasas still under evacuation orders. Peter, Suzanne. Thank you, Greg. It says something where you have kids craving normalcy and right. creating or craving their routine back because mm -hmm. how upsetting for young children or even teenagers to pack up their belongings and move from house to house. And now we have more neighborhoods this morning that are evacuating yet again. Some neighborhoods that were evacuated before the Hidden Valley area, Carlisle Canyon, Lake Sherwood and Boney Mountain area, though that was about uh, a little over an hour ago when we saw that first evacuation. So we do know that the flames have shifted a little bit. They have been put out in a lot of areas and we're seeing the smoke turn to white. Whereas an hour ago, it was thick black smoke. Danielle, have the winds changed out there at all? You know, the winds haven't really changed. I think the biggest difference uh, that we've seen is just the air attacks on this fire have just been really, really, really helpful. Um, Boney Mountain is a area really close to here and winds still are 
constantly just going 45 miles per hour out of the northeast. So winds have not really moved. Um, you know, again, the attack from the air has been really helpful here. And then this is just really a rough area. It was kind of behind the Sherwood area and people were reporting that they could see flames from Lake Sherwood. So we were really concerned. And at that point, uh, that would have meant that this fire was going against the wind, which in the last few days we have seen that. But now it does look like this fire is moving away from Sherwood and Hidden Valley. Uh, now keep in mind if they are not able to get a handle on this. Now it does look like they are, but if not, this would push this fire toward the Channel Islands area. Um, so once again, this is an area where this fire would have the potential to go all the way to the coast and to the beach if they didn't get a handle on it. And that landscape, just seeing it from that wide perspective, it is so mm. devastated. We have that update of 83% of National Park Service land oh. just in the Santa Monica Mountains has burned. That leaves 17% of fresh vegetation where wildlife have refuge. So clearly a lot of wildlife have either tried to escape to safety or have lost their lives from this fire. And you have to think about how many years it's going to take for all of that vegetation to grow back. Yeah, I mean, we have, it's gone. Yeah, we have some trees. Just We just know one small example, but it's an, I, it's an example of the greater area. The ranch, the Paramount, Paramount Ranch, ranch mm -hmm. where they have the protected trees. They were so beautiful, had a gorgeous canopy that was saved for film shoots and movies. They wouldn't let you park anywhere near the roots because the roots were so old and fragile. All of those trees burned up. All that was left in that ranch was a, a church, and they can rebuild movie sets, but you can't. It takes hundreds of years to build the kind of, not build, to grow the kind right. of trees that have taken root yeah, in these areas. Yeah, nature moves very slowly. And you think about, those are just the trees we know about, mm -hmm. Suzanne. You don't even know about some of the wildlife that has been in these foothills where people don't even live. So, goodness, you, you have to, your heart not only goes out to the people whose lives are affected by this fire, but also, you have to think about nature and the wildlife. You mentioned the mountain lions, several mountain lions that we had been tracking, including P22. We can't find them now. Yeah, five are unaccounted for. What it is, they have activity on eight of the mountain lions, which is a good sign. But when you aren't getting any reaction from five, hopefully that means they just left the area, but you just don't know. And it's just an example of the devastation that this right. area is dealing with it in Southern California. It affects all walks of life. And Danielle, we continue to look live from Sky 2 as these choppers continue to make water drops as well as the DC-10 and the fixed wing aircraft. Let's talk about air quality as well. I mean, obviously people who, not just in the surrounding areas, but people all over Southern California are going to be probably seeing more ash and more smoke and having more issues in terms of breathing. Yeah, and it's interesting because I remember on Saturday when those winds turned on shore, so many people, uh, you know, everywhere from the South Bay to Santa Monica were saying, oh my goodness, the air quality is so terrible because that wind turned on shore and brought all that bad air back. Now, the only kind of good news about our winds right now is that it's pushing all of this offshore. So if you do live uh, along the coast right now, you're probably going to be feeling some of this, but then it's going to be pushed way out beyond into the ocean. Now, I actually want to tell you guys, I just got another video from a friend who lives in Lake Sherwood, and it is almost crystal clear with blue skies there right now over the Sherwood community. So that's just another indication of this northeast wind, how quickly it can push that air out and, you know, on the flip side, how quickly it can push a fire too. So we still have gusty conditions, Boney Mountain still 40 to 50 miles per hour. Uh, the air attacks look to be getting a really good handle on this. This is moving away from the Sherwood and the Hidden Valley area now, and they look to be doing a really good job getting this under control. But we still have red flag warnings in effect today, tomorrow. We have high wind warnings and wind advisories for today too. So we are not out of the woods yet. And this has just kind of been a good example of uh, how dangerous this fire still is out there. And thank you so much, Danielle, for that update on the winds and also that we're seeing clear skies in the Sherwood area, Sherwood Forest area, rather. Our Candace Crone is live on the ground where uh, some of the neighbors were out taking photos because they had been evacuated earlier. Now they just wanted to see how the fire looked from now. Candace? 
That's right, Suzanne. I want to show you uh, some of those folks that have come out here, uh, pulled up in their car, some of them outside of them, just kind of checking it out, taking it all in. I think that's a camera phone or some binoculars that somebody has there in the distance. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people just um, out and about wanting to see what this fire is doing, what direction it's moving in, uh, how the wind is pushing it. And I can tell you it does look a lot better just in the last hour since we've been here. If you take a look at the hillside there, you can see a lot of that white smoke has now cleared out and it's drifting. Uh, we're not seeing that heavy, thick black smoke like we did about an hour ago. And so the skies have even cleared up as well. We are still seeing the fire aircraft, though, um, circle around, just kind of watching, making sure that uh, this fire doesn't flare uh, back up to the intensity that it was when, about an hour ago. Uh, but for the most part, it looks a lot different, much better now than it did about an hour ago when we got here. But nonetheless, it's still cre uh, created quite the scene out here. Uh, neighbors just kind of coming out to make sure that uh, it doesn't get out of completely out of control and are hoping for the best. But a man I spoke to about 20 minutes ago said that he is ready to go just in case. He said, of course, we're in fire season all year long. And so he spoke to his kids all last week uh, when the fire first started on uh, Thursday. Uh, that he wanted to make sure they knew what to do uh, in the event that they had to evacuate. So at this point, things are looking a lot better, Peter and Suzanne. Thank you so much, Candace. And if you're just joining us at 1047, we've been following this fire since about 930 this morning where it really look terrible, but it's looking better, even though we're not out of the woods. A major flare up of the Woolsey fire was reported around 915 this morning in the Westlake Village area near Lake Sherwood in the Santa Monica Mountains near Hidden Valley. That's where a large plume of smoke was visible along with active flames. And we still have some active flames mm -hmm. happening, but we see the power of the air attacks making such a difference because fire crews are able to move air resources quickly from area to area and we know that multiple air resources were already in the air they just redirected them and they're able to create fire breaks out here to protect neighborhoods look at the disparity there suzanne you could see on the right side all that green lush brush where the flames are and then the other side just uh, completely black and reduced to ash brush I, that had been there for decades yeah. so it's just tragic when you think about more than 96,000 acres of burned this fire only 35% contained, and at least 435 structures have been destroyed. So this fire continues to wreak havoc. And again, these flare-ups are still an issue for firefighters because once the, uh, the embers spread and the, and the hot spots reignite, you could have, like you see right there, more open flames. And we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but you and I have covered these fires before, right. as well as the aftermath oh. and the concern we have in the later winter months when the fires have passed, which it's going to take a time for that, is, of course, the mudslide dangerous for these areas. And we saw that with the Thomas fire, certainly. And that was considered the largest fire, the most destructive in California history. And then we had all the rains that just devastated Montecito. I, obviously, one step at a time here. But certainly, that's going to be a major concern going into the winter months. Even though if the flames don't necessarily impact homes right now and you just see them in the open brush, all of that is now going to loosen the soil, and that's going to have a major impact on all the neighborhoods below the hillsides here, even after these fires are put out. So yeah. definitely still a lot of concern. Mandatory evacuation still in effect for Malibu, Hidden Hills, Calabasas, Oak Park, parts of Thousand Oaks and Westlake Village. Uh, we did hear earlier that there were evacuations that had been lifted for other parts of Westlake Village and West Hills and Agora Hills, but now that there are flare-ups, a lot of these folks who actually returned home today are now being told to leave all over again. And we have our Cara Finstrom on the ground where she's been talking to people who are evacuating this morning, as well as a retired L.A. Fire Department um, chief. And we have much more from Cara. Cara? Yeah, and I'm just showing you there are some goats that are being taken out of the evacuation zone. Oh. That's our friends at the Weather Channel, I think, in front as well. But uh, they just whisked, whisked them by us. Uh, we know there were a lot of horses, a lot of trailers within that evacuation zone. Some of them were just unloading uh, the horses and then put them back in the trailers because the evacuation uh, warnings had been lifted, the orders had been lifted, and then, of course, were put back in place very quickly as all of this broke out. I want to bring in Alan Tizer as we're showing you the smoke there. He's been living here in this 
community for quite a while, Newberry Park. Uh, and you told us uh, that you're so glad to see the smoke uh, moving away, but you are concerned about a shift in the winds later on that you tend to see. Yeah, the, the sundowner effect. So basically right now, this you know, is going towards the ocean, but as soon as that sun starts coming back, you know, coming down, the you know, winds, you know, can shift, and then that all that flame could come back this way, which happened about five years ago. We actually had the, it was it was down to the ocean. We thought it was done with and everything, and then we turned around and it had come back, and it was actually heading back towards uh, Sherwood in our area here. And it was that was scary. So hopefully we won't have that this time. <laughs> we know the fire department keeping a very close eye on this impressive. Uh, use of resources right as soon as this uh, lit up and the flare-up took it place. It is great. I mean, they've had, you know, so much equipment on this stuff. And look at that. I mean, it's almost gone. It looks like it's, you know, it, we get flare-ups from time to time. But this is great. It's almost uh, out, it looks like, or at least I don't see that much smoke now. Uh, you, What did you think when the initial hill fire raced through here? Uh, I know you've been here for a while. Had you seen anything quite like that in your community? Yeah, we've had a couple of them. We had one that was called a Green Meadow Fire that went down this ridge, which is a lot closer to our homes. And that one was uh, pretty scary as well. And that went all the way up to Mount Boney. So, you, you know, when Mount Boney gets caught on fire and it's so big and everything, it's, you know, it's like a big tiki torch. It's really scary. We spoke with folks from a number of communities. We started at Lake Sherwood, and then we moved to Hidden Valley, and then here, uh, here in the Newberry Park area, all impacted by uh, this mountain. Yeah, well, you know, we live here because of the mountain, I think, you know, cause it's so pretty back here. And this is a great hiking area and so forth. So, you know, it is kind of, you know, last time when we had the big fires, it was kind of, you know, devastating to go back there and see everything burnt. But, uh, you know, hopefully because we did have those fires, though, five years ago, I think it was five or six years ago, you know, that, that you know, it's things are, you know, burnt enough that, you know, we won't have, you know, it won't be bad again, I'm hoping. And, and did you get any alerts to evacuate on your phone this go round? Not this time. Not, this time. not yet. So the folks, it appears, in Newberry Park just behind us here may not have gotten those uh, evacuation orders that came when this flare-up took place. Uh, the second or third person I've spoken with, uh, Suzanne and Peter, who said they did not get an alert. However, we know Hidden Valley, and we spoke with a gentleman uh, who, who was rushing here to meet up with his one-year-old daughter who was with the in-laws just on the other side of this roadblock. They did get those uh, notices to evacuate. Yeah, our heart goes out to all of those people, and, and that father, gosh... Cara, I mean, can you imagine trying to get to your child and, and having to deal with another evacuation, hoping and, and praying that they're okay? Yeah, and then another resident where he said he's worried about the pregnant women at the hospital and just people breathing this air. It's, it's so terrible for young children, mm. for elderly people. That's why if you can avoid being out in it, you want to, but if you have to evacuate, it's best to just get out early before it gets too close. Absolutely, that's again the lesson we keep uh, hearing from folks is that they wish they would have left earlier. This uh, flare up has burned at least 50 acres, but that's not including the 96,000 acres that have already burned in the Woolsey fire. And, and again, at least 435 structures destroyed. So certainly this is a very uh, fast moving fire. That's been one of the major issues that firefighters have been contending with that this is something that, uh, and also the roads. We have to think about the impact to, to the people trying to get out right now, Jen. Yeah, that's right, Peter. We've been you know, watching this very closely. I've been in constant communication with CHP, trying to get the latest on these road closures for you. And you know, the last time that we talked, I told you that they had closed off Yerba Buena Road at Catherine Road. Well, now CHP wants to communicate that a lot of people are trying to get through to Lake Shoreward uh, through Westlake Boulevard, and they're trying to get there by using Portrero Road, but you can't access that right now because that is shut down. So they are asking folks to please turn around because there is no physical way to get them through that road. Currently, Portrero is shut off completely between Wendy Drive all the way to Westlake Boulevard. So that's Wendy Drive to the west and Route 23, which is also Westlake Boulevard to the east. So that entire stretch, I think that's like a three and a half mile stretch right now, is inaccessible. So if they ask you to turn around, please heed that and turn around because we need to not get in the way of these fire engines and these firefighters who are working very, very hard to extinguish these flames. And so once again, I just want to mention Portrero Road right now closed between Wendy Drive and Route 23. Also, Yerba Buena Road, hard closure there at Catherine Road. You are not going to be able to access that area as well. 
Carlisle Canyon, Boney Mountain, Lake Sherwood, all of these areas that are affected. There are people in place right now telling you where to go. So if you have no idea, just go to your local authority who is there and they will let you know how you can access those roads. Thank you, Jen. And we were talking about the utter devastation and how mm. many resources we need. And the president yesterday approved an expedited request for a major disaster declaration for the state of California. Uh, we're not getting a break from our fires. No. And he said that he wanted to respond quickly in order to alleviate some of the incredible suffering going on. It's a 180 degree turn to, to what he was saying just a few days ago. So it's good to know we could have federal resources helping out because all across the state of California, we have all of our resources aimed toward this fire, but also halfway across the country, fire crews have come to California, whether they're fighting the fires down here in Southern California or the campfire. And look at that right now. Oh. It's, it's been going on for a little over an hour and 45 minutes and fire crews have gotten a handle on it. At least it looks so much better than it did around 930 this morning, but it just shows you another at least 50 acres burned just this morning and a new spot of the Woodley fire. It's unfortunate isn't it that we keep seeing this type of scene and it's becoming almost familiar at this point since this has been going on day after day. Suzanne, you mentioned the firefighters. We know that there are fire crews here in California from Texas, from Arizona, from Oregon, from Nevada, all over the country. They have descended on California to help our crews here because they are stretched to the max right now, not just here in Southern California, but also up north, the Paradise Fire, the campfire there, which has now been given the nickname of the worst it is the worst wildfire in California history up north right now. Hundreds of people still missing. And we have people from all the way in Georgia and even as far away as Alaska. Yeah, Indiana, Tennessee, Missouri. I mean, it's just such a massive undertaking for fire crews here to try to get these flames under control. As we continue to look live from Sky 2, you can see a lot of traffic starting to build up there as people try to get out. Again, more evacuations, more issues for people on the roads, as Jen uh, just told us, Jen Kim. Danielle, you are still monitoring the skies for us right now. In terms of the wind, what's happening? Uh, you know, honestly, since we've gone on, the wind has not changed much, Peter. We still have those gusts at Boney Mountain, which is, keep in mind, a super high elevation. Um, but those gusts right now are at 40 miles per hour, and they're sustained at 31 still. That elevation, though, that we're talking is 1,700 feet up. So, you know, that's actually really on par with kind of where this fire is burning though, very close to the Boney Mountain area. You're looking at a map that I made kind of showing and progressing where the flames started right around behind the Sherwood area near Carlisle Canyon. And now it does look like they've kind of moved uh, staying south of Potrero Road, south of Hidden Valley. So between Hidden Valley and the beach, but they kind of look like now uh, things are, have started to move to behind the Newberry Park area. Uh, it does look like air tankers are getting a handle on this situation. I did see a video of what it looks like from Lake Sherwood right now and you guys there are blue skies you wouldn't even know anything happened so this is certainly moving uh, toward the direction of the Channel Islands area kind of toward the Point Magoo Park direction um, but at the same time that that's happening it does look like crews are getting a really good handle on this so conditions are still really rough out there that is why we still have the red flag warnings today and tomorrow too Today we also have the high wind warnings and the wind advisories. Those are set to expire uh, at five, but today and tomorrow we are not out of the woods as far as dangerous fire conditions go. All right, thank you so much, Danielle. We continue to watch from Sky 2 as this flare up devours the hillsides near the Lake Sherwood area. If you're just joining us, this is CBS 2 News at 11. I'm Peter Dowd along with Suzanne Marquez. That's right. We have a look at the latest numbers on the Woolsey fire. More than 96,000 acres have burned. It's 35% contained, and that's not including the more than 50 acres that have burned this afternoon. Preliminary estimates th show 435 structures have been destroyed. And that's a conservative number at this point. We are anticipating that number to grow. Mandatory evacuations still in effect for all of Malibu and Topanga, parts of Calabasas, Thousand Oaks, Agora Hills, and Westlake Village. However, evacuations we do know have been lifted for parts of West Hills, Oak Park, Newberry Park, and Bell Canyon. That could be changing, though. A lot of schools will be closed through Thanksgiving week, and that includes the Conejo Valley and Las Virginia School Districts, also Pepperdine University. 
And we are going to go to one of our reporters on the ground, Cara Finstrom, who has been talking to people evacuating and some just taking in the site because they are so weary from evacuating over and over again. Cara? They are, Suzanne. And the best site is this. Take a look. <laughs> Barely any smoke there behind us. And this is crazy considering what we have seen here during the past couple of hours. It was about two hours ago now that we were in Thousand Oaks covering a mop up there, spotted a big plume of smoke rising from atop this hillside and started making our way over here. And that very quickly turned into a situation. Uh, firefighters were concerned about a huge flare up here. This is, we're told, called Boney Mountain. Uh, just on the other side of this uh, is the area where firefighters brought in repeated airdrops. They had in up DC-10s. They also had up uh, helicopters, uh, retardant. Then they shut down the roads all around Boney Mountain from uh, including Newberry Park, where we are here, and a couple of other communities as well. We're not allowing people in, only allowing people out. Uh, and so very heightened concerns, but within a short period of time, they were able to really attack this. And now uh, the one of the other best sites we've seen out here has been a long line of fire trucks heading out. Uh, we also have seen uh, some of the air choppers heading away. Uh, we still see a DC-10 doing some retardant drops here, you know, just really wanting to make sure this is all out. We spoke with a man who worked for the LAFD. He was a retired firefighter. Uh, he was out here. He said one of the good things uh, that crews did just a couple months ago was they created a long break along this hillside just in case something like this should happen. The firefighters didn't do this. We think the, the state park system did, which, state was, park. which was a smart move. You know, they're, they were anticipating a possible fire. And I've lived here for 30 years, and this is the first time they cut a fuel break like this, which is super smart. Because, like I mentioned before, this is going to go to the ocean, and then it's going to turn around and come right back at us. But most of this area was burned like uh, five to ten years ago. So um, I'm optimistic that they can keep it out of the houses in this area. And we're also giving you a look at some goats that were evacuated from this area. Lots of ranches uh, in the Hidden Valley area, which is just next to Newberry Park here. We saw some trailers that had come in, just unloaded horses uh, back to that area because the evacuation orders had been lifted. And then we're loading them back up again because of the fear this flare-up created. But again, um, Peter, Suzanne, everything looks good here right now. We can't even really see uh, that much smoke over the ridge line. So very good sign. All right, Car. thanks. We want to go to a news conference now. Officials are giving an update on the Wolsey Sorry. Fire. Let's listen in. I'd first like to welcome, uh, speaking for Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, Sheriff Jim McDonald. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. I spent the morning seeing the fire devastation that now spans more than 96,000 acres over Los Angeles County and our neighbor Ventura County, and it is truly heartbreaking. The destruction of homes and property is still being assessed. While well, the estimate may be in the tens of thousands that have been saved, hundreds still sit in ruins. We fully understand that each house is a home. Each home has a life and memories attached to it. We see the pain and frustration of people trying to get back to their homes to assess for themselves what's left. We're beginning to repopulate several areas, but large portions of the fire zone remain closed. For those held back at roadside checkpoints, it must be confusing and frustrating as to why on this bright sunny day you are being turned away in some cases and deputies not letting you drive past and return to your homes. From all that I've seen and heard, the fire burned hotter, faster, and destroyed not only homes, but deep infrastructure such as power lines, water lines, sewers, roads, lights, and other things that make a city a city, particularly a safe one. Not since the devastating old Topanga fire back in 1993 has the area seen this kind of a firestorm. The fire was no different than any other major natural disaster, earthquake, tsunami, flood, from an incident command perspective. There are large trees and power poles that have fallen and are at the brink of falling, potentially crushing anything in their path. There are real health hazards from potential toxic burning smoke to other health-related uh, concerns such as power outages, water main leaks, gas leaks, and as you can imagine, many other issues. And then certainly there's the wind. We're in what we hope will be the last day of a major wind event, but we've seen largely spared because the wind gusts, sometimes as high as 50 miles an hour, have been blowing flames back toward the already burned out areas and not toward new neighborhoods. 
The fire that flared up along the 118 freeway in Simi Valley is an example of how quickly a fire can move and spread. Just over an hour ago, we experienced another flare-up in the Lake Sherwood area of Ventura County, and the danger is far from over. If you're being held back, it's because your life and the lives of your family and neighbors are still potentially in danger. Numerous meetings occur every day with dozens of our county and city agencies, as well as our utility partners who are all responsible for the functionality of our infrastructure and overall safety of all of our residents. And this includes numerous fire agencies, building and safety departments, public works, Caltrans, health department, animal control, and supporting organizations such as the American Red Cross that have set up our shelters. We want to get you home, but more important, we want you to be safe. I will personally be working with our partners in the numerous cities and county areas, along with state and federal agencies who have come together to support our mission of returning our community and our residents to their homes. We're also reminding our personnel to deal with residents' questions in as, in as sensitive a manner as possible. Recently, we had reports of a small group of individuals taking independent action in the Malibu area who have responded to the area believing they can assist in protecting the community. For those individuals and anyone else concerned, our department and our partners and the personnel on scene are able to ensure the protection of life and property of our communities. And we would appreciate your cooperation in remaining out of the impacted areas while we work toward returning our residents and businesses to these neighborhoods. Currently, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department has 632 deputy personnel deployed throughout this fire incident. We've implemented 12-hour shifts uh, scheduled for majority of our deputy personnel to ensure that we have adequate staffing to be able to maintain the service and protection to the communities and residents that we serve. While we greatly appreciate the phenomenal work being done by all of our firefighters, law enforcement personnel, supporting agencies and organizations who have left their families in the service of both our impacted counties, we're grateful to our residents and local businesses who continue to be patient and understanding as we work together to restore our communities. This will not happen quickly, but it will happen with all of us continuing to work together as one community. Thank you for your compassion to our neighbors and to those impacted families, and may God bless each and every one of you during these challenging times for both Los Angeles and Ventura counties. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to bring from Ventura County Sheriff's Department, Captain Denise Sliva. Hi, good afternoon. Today I'd like to mostly speak to our operations that we're conducting today for the fires, for the Woolsey and also still the Hill fires. Uh, today we have 80 personnel devoted to the fires. Our objectives today for those personnel are to assist still with the repopulation of the areas that were evacuated, to provide high visibility patrol for the residents in that area so they can feel safe that we're looking out for looters, we're in the area, and also looking for possible flare-ups of, of the fire. Today we did have a flare-up. Uh, of the fire this morning. We experienced that over in the Hidden Valley area. The Hidden Valley area and Lake Sherwood areas that are south of Potrero Road continue to be mandatory evacuation areas. And so we sent uh, immediately, we sent about 40 to 50 personnel to that area to go through those communities again in case that area was repopulated. We did make contact with residents, reminded of, of the fire that was moving quickly their way, and were able to provide assistance for many of those residents that were fleeing the area. We also contacted uh, individuals that were operating drones in that area, and we want to remind the public that this is not the time to get that picture. We cannot have drones interrupting the fire efforts. We just cannot have that. It's not safe. Uh, we ask the public to remain vigilant. We do have that one zone that is a mandatory evacuation area, again, south of Petrero Road in the Lake Sherwood area and Hidden Valley areas. That is our only mandatory evacuation area in Ventura County. I was asked to um, let the public know in the Thousand Oaks communities and unincorporated communities of the Thousand Oaks and Oak Park areas, there will be a meeting tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. at the Civic Arts Plaza Sure Forum. That is for the residents directly affected by the fires. There will be services there to give information on uh, getting back home, essentially, 
to getting the service that the services that you need, what is available to you. So again, that's tomorrow evening, Wednesday evening, 6 p.m. at the Civic Arts Plaza, the Sure Forum for those residents affected. And one reminder again for information on our evacuations and road closures, go to vcemergency.com. Thank you. From the California Highway Patrol, we have Lieutenant John Castro. Good morning, everybody. Um, the CHP continues to work to ensure the safety of our highways and roadways that we're responsible for. Um, I'll give you a quick update on the 101 freeway. Um, we have lifted all closures for all on and off ramps on the 101 freeway in the affected areas, except for Liberty Canyon. So Liberty Canyon is the only remaining closure at this time. Um, as far as Pacific Coast Highway, PCH, it's still closed from sunset to Las Posas. And uh, due to the new flare up that uh, the sheriff just talked about, um, you can expect a possibility of additional closures uh, if conditions change in the Lake Sherwood or Westlake area. That's all we have. Thank you. Representative Ventura County Fire Department, we have Fire Chief Mark Lorenzen. Uh, good morning. I'd like to talk a little bit about the current fire situation. Uh, just prior to 9 o'clock, I was contacted by my operations chief on the Woolsey fire to give me a heads up that we're going to have some significant activity in the uh, lower portion of Carlisle Canyon. That activity became uh, pretty visible to the public about 9.15. You could see there was a large loom up and what was basically happening there is there was a large unburned a couple of canyons of fuel there. The fire came into alignment at the bottom of the canyon and along with our significant winds it pushed it up towards uh, a prominent peak we call Boney Mountain. Fortunately for us, we have incredibly robust resources in and around the uh, communities, specifically Lake Sherwood. We responded additional resources in there. I can tell the community that we are, are very confident that they are safe there. The wind is currently pushing the fire up and away from the populated areas. Again, what this points out to our public is that we are not out of the woods yet. We still have some incredibly tough conditions ahead of us. Please, as has been said in the past, please remain vigilant. Stay tuned to your local media outlets. We will let you know of any changing conditions. And please heed all evacuation warnings. Cal Fire, we have Deputy Chief Nick Schuler. Good morning. Over the last 30 days, firefighters from across California have battled more than 500 new fires. In the last week alone, more than 225,000 acres have burned, including the most destructive and deadly fire in California's history, the Paradise Fire, excuse me, in Paradise, California. To show the effort that's been made here in Ventura and LA counties, I have a couple statistics for you. More than 15 air tankers have dropped nearly a half a million gallons of retardant. 22 helicopters have dropped more than a million and a half gallons of water and we have hundreds of firefighters still committed to this incident and more than 8,700 statewide. As Santa Ana winds continue and when the new fires begin, we ask the public to remain vigilant and listen to our law enforcement counterparts on evacuations. Thank you. Now from the Los Angeles County Fire Department, Fire Chief Daryl Osby. Good morning. Once again, Darrell Wasby, Fire Chief, LA County Fire Department. And once again, on behalf of Supervisor Sheila Q, whose third district is impacted, uh, we'd like to thank everybody for their response and their hard work, including the media. And I had an opportunity last night and this morning to go out visit some of our firefighters and sheriff deputies that have been on the front line since day one, just to talk about their stories and how they were scrambling to save lives and as you recognize that as a, pr a priority for first responders, our priorities are life, property, and then containment. And a lot of their initial efforts were just focused on saving lives. And they were proud from that respect that they were able to evacuate a lot of people. Um, this morning we were having a conversation and I was able to just reflect upon my career. And it's been a pretty dynamic career over the last uh, three decades that the only other challenging 
uh, incident that I've been under this magnitude was Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Um, as we stand here today, the total acreage on this fire is 96,314 96, acres. Um, that's over 150 square miles, which is larger than the size of the city of Denver. Uh, I, I looked at our fire history maps this morning, and our fire history maps go back 100 years, and this is the largest fire on record dating back over 100 years. To date, um, as I mentioned earlier, there are, in the footprint of this fire, there's approximately 57,000 structures. Um, unfortunately, to date, we, as our burn assessment teams are doing their assessment, they've identified 435 structures uh, that are destroyed. They're walking in many canyons by foot or by vehicle in certain areas because the access is very limited. So it's going to take several more days for them to get a complete accurate account of structures lost. But in my estimation, that number is going to rise significantly as they go through more pockets of canyons um, heading west. As mentioned by my counterpart from Ventura County as it relates to the flare-up in uh, Carlisle Canyon, that's just an example of many canyons that we're concerned about in Los Angeles County. That's why the evacuation order is still in, in, in place. Um, we have our firefighter crews and copters working diligently in these canyons to try to keep these fires at bay. But we are concerned that as it relates to the winds today, they're going to subside. And then probably Thursday or Friday, we're going to have maybe some onshore winds, which is going to shift the wind direction and also shift the direction in which some of these fires are, can burn. So we're primarily concerned about the south end of this uh, fire in Malibu Canyon to keep it in that canyon and not let it come out of the canyon to go to other parts of Malibu and potentially Topanga Canyon. In conclusion, I know the sheriff's talked about people going back home. Uh, we're doing all that we can to allow people to go back home when it's safe. I can't even relate to being evacuated this long, but we will let you go back home when it's safe. Where We have let people re uh, populate the communities and go back home between the Los Angeles County Fire Department and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. We've established uh, occupant support teams. So we will have uh, personnel in those communities assisting people to shift through their homes if they've lost their property to provide support for them. If you're unable to find a team that you can visit any local county fire station to do that. And last but not least, the last meeting I had this morning as we are trying to get this fire under control is to go to the, through the recovery phase and to allow people to start recovering from this uh, catastrophic incident. But also, too, was brought to my attention that sometime next week we're going to be expecting our, our first uh, rainfall for the, the, the year, which will be helpful for our firefighters. But as seen by the uh, experience in the Thomas fire from last year, that could potentially create some concerns with mud flows. So we're beginning to prepare for that. In conclusion, I would just like to thank the citizens for their cooperation and, and be safe. At this time, I'd like to open up to any questions. Well, I just want to reemphasize that the fire is still currently under investigation. So we are looking at all avenues and potential causes as it relates to this incident. And once those are determined and made known, then we'll release them publicly. As it relates to Southern California Edison, that's part of their responsibility to file that report with the uh, California Public Commission, that it was brought to my attention that around the uh, start of this fire that they had some alarms go off in their system as it relates to their utilities. It's unclear if the alarm was caused by the fire. It's unclear if it was 
related prior to the fire or after the fire, but all those things are being investi investigated. Yeah, I, I think that to get into technical details, we, we need to have Southern California Edison to speak to that. But generically, uh, we do need power to our homes and our businesses. And I d am aware that um, our utility company is hardening the lines in our wildland interface areas. And I do know that they're filing an application to the commission to allow them to expend funds to continue that process to ensure that they're working with us to ensure that we have a safe community. I will reach out to them. Could I ask you, is there a feeling that you're getting the upper hand, the container number keeps rising, it seems that you're preventing the fire from going much beyond the footprint, you're basically trying to get these spot fires and spare them Is there some recent problems around where the U.S. City is robbed? Well, absolutely. I can just, you can see by the fact that we don't have big loom-ups that we're getting the upper hand here. And there is a lot of uh, confidence that, as it relates to the containment and control of this fire, that we're feeling better. Um, our containment percentages have increased. I know that this, there, there's a, um, a, a, a deep concern and, 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 and need and desire for our citizens to re come back to their homes, which we truly are sensitive to. Um, we feel, as soon as we're comfortable in relation to the fire service side, our first responders from uh, the law branch, and our utilities, because as it relates to these areas that are still um, evacuated, um, if you drive in there, we still have utility power lines down, um, debris in the roads, landslides, uh, no services, and so we're so concerned about the safety and welfare of our citizens, and uh, life safety is always the paramount priority for first responders. The question was, can we give examples of where we can see that the fire crews have getting, gotten the upper hand on, the, on, the, on this fire? And I think that that's evident by the communities that we've allowed to go back home. Um, and then we're reassessing more communities on the uh, this side of the 101 freeway to allow them to go back home safely. Um, our main concern as it relates to uh, letting people go back home is primarily on the west side of the fire. And then once this fire threat diminishes, then the communities south and Topanga, Topanga Canyon, when we are we feel comfortable that it's safe for them to go home, then we'll make that determination and let them go back home. The risk has diminished significantly. I mean, when you think about this fire several days ago, it burned from Bell Canyon to the, uh, to the ocean, which is approximately 30 miles in length. So our firefighters have gotten the upper hand in a lot of parts of this, uh, this fire, including Bell Canyon. Our, our primary concern is in the, um, the, the, the everything west of us. There are still pockets of unburned brush. There's still a lot of hot spots with these winds. There's still a huge potential of embers uh, burning those pockets of brush, as, our, as mentioned this morning by my counterpart, and evident in Ventura County. And so once that subsides, then we can be able to let more people go home. And as I also mentioned that on the south side of this fire, we were concerned about Malibu Canyon. Once we feel comfortable in that area, then we'll be able to let the people in Topanga Canyon go back home. Um, I, okay, okay. All, all, every fire official and law enforcement official will be available for comments, one-on-one -on -one questions. We're going to end this press conference now here at 11 o'clock. We'll update you for any other briefings. Again, everybody will be available for any other questions. Thank you.
All right, we just got an update from authorities there on the Woolsey fire that continues to ravage Southern California. I want to start with LA County Fire Chief Darrell Osby. He said some very interesting things, Suzanne. One of the things that he, he talked about was the potential cause of the Woolsey fire. He says this is still under investigation, but around the start of this fire, there was an alarm that went off with, with an electric utility. He specifically mentioned SoCal Edison, but right now it is unclear if that alarm was before or after the fire broke out. And he also talked about the magnitude of this fire and how he compares it to Hurricane Katrina all the way back in 2005. And LA County Sheriff Jim McDonald said there are people frustrated they can't go home. He said, quote, if you're being held back, it's because your life and the lives of your family and neighbors are still potentially in danger. We want to get you home, but more importantly, we want you alive. He's concerned about the terrain, of course. Even if your home is safe, he said there are trees that could fall and injure people or destroy homes. There are down lines. He said it's the most dangerous since the Topanga fire in the area back in 2005, 13 years ago. Yeah, and right now this fire has destroyed more than 150 square miles, and they put this in perspective. That is larger than the city of Denver, Colorado, more than 96,000 acres, the largest fire on record dating back 100 years in our area. Stay with us. Our coverage of the fire continues right here on CBS2. Are you worried about what you are forgetting? Gradual memory loss can make even routine tasks frustrating and things you enjoy challenging. Now, doctors near you are conducting a clinical research study that is investigating a study drug for memory loss caused by early Alzheimer's disease. If problems with memory are beginning to impact you or someone you love, call 1-877-939-3527 today to find out more. That's 1-877-939-3527. Welcome to Emirates, Mr. Jones. Just sit back, relax, and let us entertain you. With over 3,500 channels of entertainment, including the latest movies and box sets from around the world. We even have live sports and news channels. And your free Wi-Fi will start shortly. Enjoy your flight, Mr. Jones. World's best in-flight entertainment. Fly Emirates. Fly better. Now is the perfect time to replace that ugly garage door with a beautiful Mesa door during our super fall sale. Check this out, a new garage door, normally $9.49. Right now it's just $4.99, a $450 savings. But wait, call now for our exclusive Quiet Glide system. It totally reduces the noise of your garage door. An additional $350 value, now absolutely free. You must call now. Call 888-590-MESA. We've had Honey Baked Ham for as long as I can remember. I grew up with it, now our kids are growing up with it. My favorite is the glaze. The crunch, the sweetness. Amazing. <laughs> the sides, there is no negotiation in my house, are the cheesy potatoes and the cream corn. Champagne mustard and the pineapple chutney. I don't have to make anything anymore. I think I'm going to get a Honey Baked Ham. Mom got a Honey Baked Ham. Son, I got the Honey Baked Ham. I'm coming home with it. This Thanksgiving, come home with Honey Baked Ham. Life can change in an instant. Be covered when it does with a health plan through Covered California. We offer free expert help choosing the best plan for you, and all of our plans include free preventive care. Financial help is available, so check for yourself to see what savings you qualify for. For health insurance starting January 1st, enroll by December 15th. Because you never know when life will change. Get covered today. Now is an important time when people need answers and emotions are running high. If you need information or are looking for ways to help, please call the Ventura County Hotline below. CBS 2 News at 11 a.m. We have a look at the latest numbers on the Woolsey fire. More than 96,000 acres have burned. It's now 35% contained. Preliminary estimates show 435 structures have been destroyed. Mandatory evacuations remain in effect for all of Malibu and Topanga in parts of Calabasas, Thousand Oaks, Agora Hills, and Westlake Village. However, evacuations have been lifted for West Hills, Oak Park, Newberry Park, and Bell Canyon. Certainly a lot of schools will be closed through Thanksgiving week, including the Conejo Valley and Las Virginas School Districts and Pepperdine University. 
All right, we continue our live team coverage with CBS 2's Candace Crone, who is live for us in Newberry Park. Candace. Yeah, Peter, things are looking a little bit better out here, but nonetheless, people are still on edge. Take a look. Uh, we can see the skyline looking uh, much better. Just some white smoke at this point. Uh, a stark difference in what we saw when we pulled up about 915 this morning. The sky was just filled with black smoke. We could see it for miles around. Let's take a look at some video of those flames that were at the peak uh, earlier this morning. It attracted a large crowd. We've seen a lot of people, drivers just kind of pull over. Uh, residents come out of their homes with their camera phones and binoculars to take pictures. Uh, this fire is not far from the Sycamore Canyon, which a lot of people who live in the area told me is a popular place where they hike and bike. We've also seen uh, some deer and other wildlife are running around, uh, presumably being pushed from their natural habitat because of this fire. Now, I spoke to a man who lives in Newberry Park. He says that he was shocked to see yet another fire. So my wife and I, we went out for breakfast this morning and everything was calm, everything was nice. We we're kind of like celebrating after so many days of fires that things were getting back to normal. And then all of a sudden when we came out of uh, Paneras, uh, we see this huge, uh, you know, fire here. So it is just uh, terrible for our community after what happened uh, on Wednesday night um, and all these uh, last couple of days. It's like we're not getting a break. And as I mentioned, all of that smoke has attracted quite a few spectators, including James Carey, who lives in the area. Uh, James, just kind of tell me what brought you here and describe what you've been seeing this whole time you've been sitting in your car. Yeah, well, we live nearby and we're getting conflicting reports about when we should leave. So uh, I'm very familiar with the area and I was here during the last big fire. So I come out to perimeter here, check out the smoke, watch the activity, marvel at the the bravery of our firefighters and their expertise. I mean, these planes, just look at that one right there, just dropping Fosdick. Oh, yeah. Fosdick, is that what it's called? That's amazing. Yeah, the fire retardant. Yeah, it, a good sign, though, right? It's a very good sign. And and uh, about an hour ago, the, the clouds were huge here, and now they've dissipated, so it looks like uh, whatever they're doing, they're doing right once again. Now, are you concerned about uh, you know, this thing just kind of taking off? I mean, from what we've seen, it looks like fire crews are making progress, but I guess people who live in this area always have to keep watch and be oh, vigilant. Absolutely. And any time the winds can change. Right now, they, they're favorable for our neighborhood because they're blowing away from us. But if they turn around, say, in the evening, come onshore, that could blow the whole thing back. That's actually what happened with the 2013 fire. It went all the way to the coast. Winds changed, came all the way back to this fence right in front of us. Mm -hmm. All right, James, thank you so much for speaking with us. Uh, again, as you can see, it looks drastically different than uh, when we first got here around 915 this morning. A good sign. We're not getting those heavy, heavy, intense winds. So hopefully uh, that is helping firefighters. But nonetheless, I can say, uh, Peter and Suzanne, that people are feeling a little bit uh, more relieved. And now that uh, the skyline is looking a lot better. I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Candace, thank you so much. Some areas are seeing relief. Evacuations are being lifted for parts of Calabasas. That's right. CBS 2's Greg Mills continues. Our, actually, our car, Finstrom, is live on the ground. Cara, how's it looking out there? Yeah, well, the big relief for folks out here was to see that line of fire trucks that headed out uh, after that huge flare up here on Boney Mountain. And two of the folks that we've been speaking with throughout the morning here that were really watching all this go down are Ann and Cooper, their neighbors. They live just a couple blocks away in, in Newberry Park. Uh, you were watching those magnificent airdrops, uh, one after the other. Uh, and tell me about how you're feeling right now. Right now, I feel a little bit relieved. It's, 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 I already I stopped it, but basically, I'm still nervous because we've already packed things, you know, just in case, you know, anything happens again. But um, all I can say is that, you know, we're praying for everybody, you know, and people that have already been, you know, devastated by this uh, incident, you know, the fire and everything. And um, just hoping that everybody is going to be okay, you know. Basically, that's what I'm really praying for. <laughs> a lot of nerves out here, and, and Cooper is just 12 years old. Uh, you said initially when the fire raged through this neighborhood, you were in school and got very concerned. Uh, yeah, a girl ran into my classroom, and she said there was a big fire, and my teacher asked if it was on campus, and we said no, but it was very scary. The smoke just, it just covered the whole sky, and then the sun, it just turned red, and I was, I was just really scared. And then this today, uh, and, and what were you doing at that point? Um, I was actually sleeping, and my brother came in and said, get up, there's a fire on Boney. And my mom said, don't say that because it'll, it'll 
it'll um, make them nervous. So my mom came in and said, just we're gonna pack everything in the car just to make sure in case we have to evacuate. And I'm just relieved that the firefighters, they're just doing a great job. Thank you so much from young and older <laughs> and many, many folks in this community, uh, Peter and Sharon, uh, telling us how grateful they are to those firefighters. The quickness, the swiftness with which they responded, and we saw those DC-10s overhead uh, and all of those helicopters dropping water, really quite remarkable. And of course, everyone here is saying this really does underline the need for the caution that these firefighters have been exercising in bringing people back into some of these communities. You got that right. And again, Cara, you just mentioned the gratitude among so many people. A lot of these folks had to evacuate. They're now returning, hopefully, to their homes. It just seems like the optimism has returned for some of these folks. It has. Uh, and, you know, earlier, I, I think we spoke during our last hour uh, with a firefighter, a retired firefighter. Um, who talked about all the work that's been done just because we know we're in a drought situation. We know what our hillsides look like. We knew what the threat was uh, before the Santa Ana winds kicked in, that there was a break put here for the first time in a long time next to this hillside. And he said, had the flames come this way, that break would have been vitally important to protecting Newberry Park, which has 12,000 residents uh, just to the other side of us here. So a lot of gratitude for the work that's been done to try and protect communities uh, and to continue to protect communities now that we're dealing with this very real fire. All right, Cara, thanks so much. Well, some areas are seeing some relief and the evacuations have been lifted for parts of Calabasas. CBS 2's Greg Mills continues our live team coverage with a look at which neighborhoods are back open to residents, but it hasn't been easy out there, Greg. Suzanne and Peter, no, it hasn't been easy. We are just this side of Las Virginas. Malibu State Park is that direction, kind of uh, borders up against this neighborhood. Let me tell you, I got to read it, I'm sorry, but it's uh, Lone Springs Road and Sage Court. I am on Lone Springs Road. Sage Court is right there. Been interesting. People have been, the evacuation orders were lifted this morning. People coming back here, as you can see, tons of cars. One thing is very interesting, too, their power is out. I'm sorry, excuse me, power is on, internet is out. So we've noticed a lot of people out walking. Uh, so that might not be such a bad deal when the internet is out, although this woman who came back with her family just a little while ago said she works from home and that uh, internet is life. So you can take a look at this neighborhood. This neighborhood was evacuated since uh, late last week, last Thursday night, and uh, people have tales to tell. We to spoke to uh, a couple of families that are uh, together right now in this brown house to your right, and uh, here's their story, a harrowing tale from just the last week. Oh my God, oh my God. The voices of the daughters of Shireen and Rita, good friends whose families were driven out of their homes last week when fire threatened their Calabasas neighborhoods. I just called my friend and she said, just come. And I left around two o'clock. First we went to my friend's house in Westlake, but in the middle of the night about, or in the early in the morning, about four o'clock, uh, they asked us to evacuate there as well. So. Then we uh, went to my other friend's house in Moore Park. For a few days, neither family knew if their home survived. I missed my home. Everybody was saying all around my uh, house, the hills are burning. And it was really scary. I was, I was scared. It is a very scary situation. I am on Lost Springs Road. Let me clarify that this whole area, she was right. Everything around this area, this part of Calabasas, did burn. The only thing it didn't burn is this neighborhood. And people were thrilled to come back to their homes. Her home is right here. Shireen's home is right here. Rita's family is on their third or fourth stop since last Thursday. They are shacking up right here. I shouldn't say it, excuse me. They are, they are uh, staying here with uh, Shireen in this, uh, and her family in this house right here. And it, they're good friends, their kids are good friends, so it's a good deal. But Rita can't wait to get back to her home. She's hoping tomorrow the rest of the uh, evacuation orders for Calabasas will be lifted. So, so far, everybody's outside. They're talking, comparing tales, talking about where they were. A lot of people went and spent time with friends. And in the case of Rita, friend, and then more friends, and then more friends, and back here with her friends here in Calabasas. But uh, people are back here. They're happy. But other parts of Calabasas are still uh, under evacuation orders and they have watched from afar as uh, things like Lake Sherwood erupted this afternoon. We've had wind here today, not strong wind, but pretty much a steady wind here. And so there's always concern. But the good thing for these people is, as they said, 
everything burned around it, so they should be safe, but uh, no guarantees. We know how wild this has been with those embers traveling a long, long way and starting new fires with this, this fire we've had now for the better part of a week. Peter, Suzanne, back to you two. You were right about that, Greg. Certainly wild. Thanks. And he was saying that the kids wish they were back in school. They want that normalcy back, so they're really Can't going through them. a tough time, too. Mm -hmm. and we want to let you know how you can help. CBS2 and KCAL 9 are partnering with the LA Rams and United Way to help those impacted by the Woolsey and Hill fires. Right now, you can donate online. Just go to cbsla.com slash cbslahelps. It's on your screen right now. And be sure to watch CBS2 and KCAL 9 tomorrow. We have a live fundraiser starting at 11 in the morning. We'll be right back. You know when you're at Ross and you find a deal on cookware that makes you say, yes. Oh yeah, bring on the holidays. That's Yes For Less. Everything you need to prep, cook, and serve up the season. It feels even better when you find it for less. At Ross, Yes For Less. You never stop trying to get more out of life. So get more peace of mind and more coverage with a Medicare supplement plan from Blue Shield of California. Call 855-438-7443 today to learn more. A Medicare supplement plan will help cover the costs that original Medicare doesn't. So even when you're exploring the world or visiting loved ones, you'll be covered. And with our newest plan, Plan F Extra, you'll get even more. More value with vision and hearing aid coverage more perks like an emergency alert device, and gym membership that you can use nationwide, and more care with a nurse line that you can call anytime. You've worked hard to get more out of life, so get more out of your Medicare supplement plan when you choose Blue Shield of California. Call 855-438-7443 to learn more and enroll today. He literally scammed me. A first time house flipper takes a loss. You didn't ask for any references. I did not. Well, that should have been the first thing that they taught you in your real estate course. Now she wants to rebuild her bank account. You gave the defendant $3,000 for cabinets. He never had any intention of bringing any cabinets. He never paid for any cabinets. He never ordered any cabinets. You're a thief. Next Judge Judy. Today at 4 on CBS 2. Have you tried depression medications, but you're still feeling blue? Join a clinical study of an investigational drug designed to work with antidepressants that may help unresolved symptoms. You may be eligible if you're at least 18 years old, diagnosed with major depressive disorder, are currently in a depressive episode, and have not responded well to other depression medications. Please call 1-888-STUDY-411 or visit pcrmg.com. You know when you're at Ross and you realize you are the hostess with the mostess? Yes. Yeah, that's Yes For Less. Entertain in style all season long. It feels even better when you find it for less. At Ross, Yes For Less. He literally scammed me. A first time house flipper takes a loss. He never had any intention of bringing any cabinets. He never ordered any cabinets. You're a thief. Judge Judy. Today at four on CBS2 from around the globe to here at home. He's bringing the most important stories to you. The CBS Evening News with Jeff Glor. Welcome back to CBS 2 News at 11:43. Two alpacas were saved from the Woolsey fire thanks to some good Samaritans and firefighters. Jim Vickers says these two alpacas were penned up on a property near his home and he tells us sadly six other alpacas didn't make it. But the firefighters helped him and his wife load the surviving two into his trailer. The alpacas are now safe at Pierce College, and the Vickers say they plan to eventually adopt the two. Oh, very nice. And Sandra Bullock is helping animals affected by our local fires. The actress donated $100,000 to the Humane Society of Ventura County, which is rescuing and caring for all the evacuated animals. The group says the money will help provide 24-7 care for horses, bulls, donkeys, ducks, and others. And we've been covering all of these 
wind conditions and the weather, and it's really been tough because we haven't gotten a break recently. Yeah, it's not over yet, right, Danielle? No, no breaks, you guys. It is almost over. The end is in sight. That's the good news that I do have. But until then, we still have the red flag warnings in effect for many of you through tomorrow at 5 for the beach and the basin till tonight at 5. Wind advisories and high wind warnings are set to expire at 5 o'clock today. So at least the winds are going to wind down for some of you. We're still going to have really dry conditions and warm temperatures into tomorrow. So I do want to show you the winds right now. Still seeing gusty conditions.